वेलकम व्यूअर्स इन माय प्रीवियस डिस्कशन आई टॉक अबाउट ग्राउंड वाटर हाइड्रोलॉजी डिफाइनिंग ग्राउंड वाटर हाइड्रोलॉजी पोरोसिटी डार्सीज लॉ देन डिफ्रेंसिएटिंग बिटवीन कोफिशियंट ऑफ परमिबिलिटी एंड द इंटेंसिव परमिबिलिटी देन i also spoke about the how water circulates in the hydrological cycle today's discussion we shall be talking about the steady state flow to wells the what is ground water hydrology so as i said earlier that it is the study of the characteristics movement and occurrence of water found below the surface and an aquifer which basically wears the which is a water bearing strata strata is defined as the water bearing geological formation that can store and yield usable amounts of water so here what we have to remember is that it must yield the usable amounts of water not that it is not economically viable otherwise we will not call it as an aquifer so any saturated permeable material which yields significant quantities of water to wells and springs can be termed as an aquifer now how does this uh, moisture in the ground underground gets distributed that this is the saturated zone which is lying in, over an impervious layer now here you can see that this is the saturated zone containing water now this water can rise through capillary up to certain height in gravels supposing that the material is quite smaller in size like say clay etc there the height of this capillary rise may be even up to 2 to 3 meters whereas if the material is highly sandy then the rise of water will be less maybe sometimes only about 0.1 meter 0.2 meter 0.5 meter and like that so here you can see the, the unsaturated zone is also called vadose zone in vadose zone we have water as well as air both are present in the stratum and here you can see that this line is now phreatic surface or the piezometric surface or the water table now the same moisture distribution is presented here in a graph here you can see that uh, within this zone of saturation 100% saturation is there then there is capillary fringe and in the capillary fringe also you may get uh, 100% saturation in the bottom side and as we rise above the saturation percentage decreases and finally after reaching certain height it may become even 0% or the moist uh, the soil can be dry of course it cannot reach 0% it will always have some moisture with it so here again the capillary fringe is shown and the capillary fringe and the unsaturated zone both constitute the zone of aeration now here in this diagram you can see different kinds of aquifers on the top here you can see it is a pulsed aquifer so pulsed aquifers are basically some kind of isolated aquifers where you can find that some kind of impermeable layer is lying over and above the regular moist uh, this uh, water zone Regu regular ground water zone so this is the amount here you can see that very little amount is stored in a pulsed aquifer now here you can see that uh, now this is the impervious layer the another is the second impervious layer and third impervious layer and over and above it the saturated and unsaturated zone so now here you can see that in aquifer c a bore a well is drilled now here you can see that in this well water will automatically rise because this here the water is under pressure so this aquifer 
is basically a confined aquifer because it is confined between two impermeable layers and pressure due to confinement. So, water is rising over and above the impermeable layer. Now, in the aquifer B, you can find that there is some kind of leakage taking place from aquifer A and aquifer B. So, such kind of aquifers are termed as leaky aquifer and on the top of it, here the aquifer A, it is basically an aquifer which is termed as an unconfined aquifer. Now, a well penetrating the confined or a leaky aquifer and if this well is flowing without any mechanical device, if water is flowing outside the well, it is called a flowing well. Now, confined aquifers are also termed as the artesian aquifers. Now, the flow governing through these aquifers, the governing equation is given by Darcy, Henry Darcy. So, which is known as the Darcy's law, which says that flow rate through porous media is directly proportional to the head loss and inversely proportional to the length of flow path. So, here you can see that Q is the flow rate, HL is the head loss and L is the length of flow, L. So, here you can see that Q is directly proportional to head loss and Q is also proportional to one, it is inversely proportional to the length of flow. So, Q is directly proportional to 1 by L and combining both the equations, we get Q is equal to minus K A H L Y L. So, H L Y L is the gradient of flow, A is the cross-sectional area of flow and here one has to remember that A is the whole cross-section area. Now, K is the, high, uh, is the constant of proportionality which is known as coefficient of permeability or the hydraulic conductivity. Here you see a minus sign. So, minus sign indicates that flow is from higher potential to lower potential. Now, here you can see that as the length increases, as the length increases, HL, that is the difference between the heads, is basically, head basically going, going on decreasing. So, to put the positive sign to the velocity, etc., we put this minus sign. Now, this uh, Darcy's law can be experimentally verified by a simple apparatus. Here you can see that this is the device which is containing a sample and here you can see that this is the line at the higher potential and water is flowing from the high potential to low potential. And HL by L gives you the hydraulic gradient. So, this slope here you can see is HL by L. So, HL is the head loss and L is the total length of flow. So, HL by L is nothing but basically the sign that is the that is the vertical divided by hypotenuse. So, it is a sine theta basically. Now, here this you can see that delta H is equal to H1 minus H2 is equal to HL. So, this is your vertical and this direction L direction is giving you the hypotenuse. So, HL by L is giving basically the sine theta. Now, the same Darcy law so, here you can see now that Q by A is equal to velocity, velocity of flow, which can also, which is also equal to minus K by K into I, I is dH by dL. So, the overall Darcy's law becomes Q is equal to minus K A dHL dH by dL. Now, the, so hydraulic conductivity K can be calculated as minus Q upon A into dH by dL and Q can further be written as volume of flow divided by time duration in which it is collected upon the area of cross section and the 
hydraulic gradient. So now this hydraulic conductivity, now we can define it, a, that is a medium is said to have unit hydraulic conductivity if it transmits a unit volume of ground water in unit time at the prevailing kinematic viscosity through a cross section of unit area measured at right angle to the direction of flow under unit hydraulic gradient. Now here you can see this is the same thing that this is the volume. So unit volume calculate, collected in unit time which is passing through unit cross sectional area under unit hydraulic gradient. And the units of hydraulic conductivity may be meters per day, meters per second, but normally one prefers meters per day. Now this hydraulic conductivity, what does it basically connote? So, so here that hydraulic conductivity K, basically it is a measure of the permeability of the aquifer. So we know that gravels have large hydraulic conductivities because more water can flow through it, whereas clay or solid rocks have small, very small values. Like rocks, if it is totally impermeable, we may find the hydraulic conductivity is near to zero. Now, hydraulic conductivity, this hydraulic gradient, which is HL by head loss divided by the length of flow, HL by L, is a measure of force acting on the water. So it's like the slope of land surface and water flows faster where the slope is more that we know very well. So it is it connotes the same thing the hydraulic gradient. So which is again the I is equal to dH by dL basically it is nothing but the slope of the water surface and H is the hydraulic head or water level in a well. Now this Darcy's law is valid in a very small range of Reynolds number. The flow must be laminar and to very little extent it can be, there can be transition. So this Reynolds number is calculated by, N, that is NR is equal to rho VD by mu. So rho is the density of fluid, V is the velocity of flow and here V is basically Darcy velocity, not the actual velocity. Darcy velocity meaning that the complete area of cross section is considered though because there are particles, soil particles or uh, gravels etc. But flow is not taking place through all the cross sectional area. But here we consider all the cross sectional area and D is the characteristic diameter of the particles and mu is the dynamic viscosity. So Darcy's law is valid generally in the Reynolds number range of less than 1 and there is no serious departure if Reynolds number goes up to even 10. Now, when we talk of hydraulics of a well, so here is certain terminology you can see in this figure. Top you are seeing that ground surface, a well is penetrated. Then here you can see that initially, there is, this is the original ground water table. And ground water table originally meaning that, that every area is fully saturated up below this line and above this line is the unsaturated zone. So within that there will be Weddell's zone and then this will be the hole will be the zone of aeration. Now here you can see as soon as the pumping starts, the original ground water table is disturbed and as we start drawing water through a well, the ground water table falls very sharply near the well and a cone of depression is formed. So here you can see the cone of depression on both the sides and uh, this is indicating that what is the level of water in the well and this is all saturated zone. Now the same thing will come in this figure. Here you can see, so this is the pumping well, you have the ground water surface, there is initial water table at the atmospheric pressure. Then you can see that cone of depression is formed. So cone of depression will also be having the atmospheric pressure above it. Now we come to the steady radial flow to a well. See in a aquifer flow can be steady or unsteady. 
now steady flows are those flows which do not depend upon time and unsteady flows are those flows which depends upon time so here today we will be covering the steady flow to a well now the assumptions are to solve such kind of problems we have to make certain assumptions so which are like this that the aquifer is of infinite aerial extent aquifer is homogeneous and isotropic homogeneous means it is made of the same material throughout and isotropic means it is having similar properties throughout the aquifer there is unif then third assumption is that the th thickness of the aquifer is uniform throughout the radius of influence then horizontal piezometric surface that is the static water table at the beginning of the pumping is basically totally horizontal no sloping no slanting then the well is being pumped at a constant rate now here one thing is to be noticed that it is just not possible to have a steady flow in an aquifer of infinite extent because infinite extent means we are increasing the radius of influence infinitely now we know that when we are increasing the radius of influence infinitely there will always be head loss so certainly if you are increasing it then head loss cannot exceed the above the ground water surface so in practice it is not possible to have a steady flow in an infinite aquifer but to solve such kind of problems we make the assumption and no serious departure is made from the actual values obtained by actually doing certain experiments and these there is very good match between the theoretically obtained values and the experimentally obtained values now to solve the problems of steady radial flow to a well there are some more assumptions need to be made now dupitz was the person who suggested these uh, assumptions and who solved the problem of the radial flow to a well under steady state conditions so what is that is that he assumed that uniform flow across any section and the flow being horizontal flow being in the horizontal directions that means flow is considered to be totally horizontal however in practice it doesn't happen there is always a vertical component also then second assumption he assumed is that velocity of flow is proportional to the tangent of hydraulic gradient instead of its sine as was assumed in the darcy's law because in darcy's law we says q by a that is q is the flow rate and a is the cross uh, cross sectional area so flow per unit width per unit cross sectional area is a small q and it is proportional to dh by dx so dh is again the hydraulic head and x is in the horizontal direction in place of ds or dl which you see instead of dh by ds and here the s is the distance along the flow path so we are not considering the whole flow path rather we are taking only the horizontal component of that flow path so by making these assumptions we can solve the equation of flow to steady flow to a confined or unconfined aquifers now here in this diagram you can see we have shown different uh, components here in an unconfined aquifer so here you can see this is the horizontal line depicting original piezometric surface or the water table or the phreatic surface because it has got two three names like phreatic surface piezometric surface and as i said the water table now here you can see this is a cone of depression and at if at distance r from the center of the well you can see the distance between the cone of depression and the original 
piezometric surface is called the drawdown. Now here you are seeing already this is the cone of depression, this is the water table and this is the well, well is having diameter equal to 2RW, RW is the radius of well. Now here you can see this, this is the height of water in the well that is head in the bell from the impervious layer and here you can see that at R, R distance from the center of the well you have hydraulic uh, head of H and when this cone of depression touches at uh, infinite distance, theoretically infinite distance, it be, they become equal to the piezometric surface. So here we are saying this is the maximum, uh, maximum possible head at that point is H0 and which is happening at a distance R. Now this R is known as radius of influence of an aquifer and after which we consider that there is no drawdown. Now we come to the formulation of the problem that uh, so we recall this Darcy's law which states that Q is equal to minus Ka into dH by dL. dH by dL is again the hydraulic gradient and if we divide Q by A, V gets velocity. So velocity of flow. So then what it becomes is V is equal to minus K into I or K into dH by dL. But minus sign still remains as I said because we want to put velocity component in positive direction only. So for that purpose we have taken the minus sign. Now you consider the figure which I showed here that at the well the head is HW and diameter of the well is 2 into RW and at infinite at the radius of at the end of radius of influence which is the distance R we have the head of H0. So now applying Darcy's law we can write Q is equal to minus K A D H Y D L and A is here in this case what is A? A is will be 2 pi R into HW because this is the area which is part which is collecting water. Here I have missed basically uh, one step in between. So here I should have written Q is equal to minus K into 2 pi RW. 2 pi RW, RW is the radius of the well. 2 pi RW into H into dH by dL. One equation is missing in between. After this, so by writing this equation and separating the variables, we can write 1 by R dr is equal to 2 pi k upon qw into h into dh. Now separating these variables and integrating the equation, we get 1 by R dr integral, we get log natural log R ln R is equal to 2 pi k upon qw which is constant and integral h dh is h square by 2, the same equation we can write, so 2 and 2 gets cancelled, we write and q is taken on the left hand direction, left hand side, then we can write q is equal to pi k h square upon ln r. Now substituting the limits as h is equal to hw at r is equal to rw, as I said earlier that at the bell R is equal to RW, that is the radius of the well. So at the edge of the well, where the water is entering the aquifer, uh, this uh, well from the aquifer, so that is R is equal to RW and the head at that point is H is equal to HW. Similarly, at R is equal to capital R, that is the <coughs> radius of influence, head is H is equal to H0 as depicted in the figure here you can see that as we at as r approaches capital r head is h0 and as r approaches rw head is hw so now substituting these limits we get the equation that is qw is equal to pi k h square upon 2 qw or we can write qw is equal to pi k h square upon 
एल एन आर सो एल एन आर इज द नेचुरल लॉग नाउ वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट दिस इक्वेशन रिमूविंग बिकॉज सम पीपुल फाइंड इट कन्वीनियंट पुटिंग दीज इक्वेश नॉट यूजिंग नेचुरल लॉग बट इन स्टीड द लॉग बेस्ड टेन सो वंस वी रिमूव दिस नेचुरल लॉग देन वी हैव टू इफ वी रिप्लेस इट बाई लॉग बेस्ड टेन then the same equation will become in the denominator only the change will take place and we will write 2.303 log base 10 ry rw so i would request all the students to remember these things like how do we replace in place of natural log we put the log base 10 and not just mug up the values you must understand why such figures are coming now so the very same equation which was written here as q w is equal to pi k into h h not square minus h w square upon ln r y r w now here you can see that a square minus v square this is in that form that we can write a square minus v square is equal to a plus b multiplied by a minus b so the same equation is broken in the this format now here you can see h not square minus h square is equal to k q w oh here i have done a mistake this k will not be here k will come in the denominator not in the numerator it is just by mistake it is left here this k one has to remove this k and this k so the k will come only in the denominator component now here you can see now so we can write this the same equation by separating h square minus h square is equal to k into q w upon pi k so this k is gone here and we get ln r and y r y r w r ln r y r so r here basically i have written in general form in, because r w is the radius of the well so in general form if we are writing that r distance h is the head so in that term i have written here r and h so here you can see now i have broken this h square h not square minus h square into h plus minus h plus capital h o plus h and h o minus h so this is broken then we get h o minus h is equal to 1 upon h o plus h into q w by pi k into ln r y capital r y small r so if an aquifer is thick and very small drawdown is taking place then in such situation we can see that if this drawdown is very little in comparison to the total head at the radius of influence then we can write that h0 plus h is almost equal to 2 times h not ho why because the difference between ho and h will be very very small so in that case we can write 2 into h0 now substituting this values in place of h plus ho plus h we can write now 2h0 so now here in this next equation in place of ho minus h what it is giving it is basically the drawdown how it is drawdown now let me tell you this is ho here you can see now this is the head at the radius of influence and this is the instantaneous uh, head at point r at distance r so which is h so ho minus h is basically the drawdown that is s here you can see now this is ho this is h so we can write in place of this as s is equal to so in place of ho minus h we can write s and in place of ho plus h not plus h we can write 2h0 so by uh, now here you can see 1 by 2h0 qw by upon pi k into ln r y capital r y small r we can write in place of k into h0 h0 is also giving the total thickness of the aquifer and which thickness which is the saturated thickness of the aquifer so this can be equated with the depth 
of the confined aquifer in similar terms there also we put the depth of confined aquifer b here also we can put in place of h0 b and then k into b we get the transmissivity of the aquifer so transmissivity of the aquifer t is equal to kb and where b is the aquifer thickness so in those terms now we can write s is equal to q w upon 2 pi t into ln capital r y small r so here i repeat again the terms s is the drawdown q w is the flow rate through the discharge well 2 into pi t is the transmissivity and uh, which can uh, also be written t in, in place of t we can also write k into b the thickness of the aquifer or in this case in, in case of unconfined aquifer we can write this h0 so k into h0 and ln r capital r y small r r is the radius of influence and r is the any point any distance under consideration at which we are considering the head loss so this transmissivity is basically defined as the rate at which water of prevailing kinematic viscosity is transmitted through a unit width of aquifer under a unit hydraulic gradient and can be written as t is equal to k into b where b is the saturated thickness of the aquifer so in play in case of confined unconfined aquifer this is the saturated thickness which is the maximum at which point at the radius of influence and its unit can be meter square per day or one can write meter per second or whatsoever but most preferred is meter square by per day now we come to the flow in an in a confined aquifer so here again you can see the different terms that this is the pumping well and now again the cone of depression now this is the confined aquifer so there are two layers one is the bottom one is the top these are the confining layer and flow is taking place in this well and here you can see due to the piezometric head is going above the confining layer so here you can see this is the head and we will measure the head from the bottom this is the reference point we have made so from here you can see that in the well h at rw that is the radius of the well the head is hw and at any point under consideration at r distance head is hr or the drawdown again represented here as sr that is the drawdown at r distance and at some distance that is the radius of influence at r we are putting in place h is equal uh, this h small h is equal to capital h at r distance now the same things are again shown here in this figure where you can see now this is the original piezometric surface of phreatic line or the water table this is our cone of depression this is the piezometric surface after uh, well is being pumped and this is the impermeous layer this, at the bottom also we have impermeous layer so that is how we are getting confinement and the water is under pressure and that is how water rises in the confined aquifer so now we will be talking about the formulation of the problem so again here you see the darcy's law that is q is equal to minus k a dh by dl and so we can write k is k here and in place of a now it is 2 pi r so that is the periphery of the well multiplied by b b is the thickness of the confining layer now remember it this was earlier also 2 pi r h in case of unconfined aquifer because there the h was the distance uh, h was the distance from the bottom of the unconfined layer sorry uh, from the top of the unconfined layer at, uh, which lies below the uh, unconfined aquifer to the level of water in the well so that was the, the in the earlier case it was 2 pi r h here it is 2 pi r b and b is constant now remember it that in case of unconfined aquifer h was varying but this is a confined aquifer which always remains saturated and the b does not change that is h does not change small h does not change at the well so this is 2 pi r into b is the uh, thickness from which the water is being drawn in the well and into k into 
that is the hydraulic conductivity dh by dr now r this k into b is again the transmissivity so we can write 2 pi t in place of 2 pi r b k we can write 2 pi so 2 pi 2 pi r is taken out here and 2 pi t into r into dh by dr now again separating the variables and integrating the equation we get 1 by r dr integrate equal to integral of 2 pi t q w into dh or so integrating it we get log r uh, natural log r that is ln r is equal to 2 pi t upon q w into h now substituting the limits here again as i said that h is equal to h w at the well at r w so r w is the radius of the well so at r w distance from the center of the well h is equal to h w and at a distance of equal to capital r that is the radius of influence h is equal to h not h o so by substituting these limits we basically get h not minus h w is equal to q w upon 2 pi t into ln capital r by r w and h w h h o minus h w is same as the drawdown at the well as i said that uh, difference between these two heads we will get the drawdown and drawdown is measured from the surface of the original piezometric surface so this equation is very important equation and it is termed as equilibrium or equilibrium equation or the thames equation why this thames equation name is given because thames first derived this equation to find the solution for steady flow toward in a radial well to a well in a confined aquifer so here you can see now h O minus HW can be replaced by drawdowns as SW minus SO. So if, uh, <coughs> at infinite aerial extent, SO becomes zero. Then so that is how we have written here SW in pl in place of HO minus HW. I have written SW. Now these things could have been different <coughs> in the sense that supposing that we were considering say two observation bells away from the well because normally one should avoid taking drawdowns in the well itself for the purpose of these calculations because in the well their uh, well losses also take place due to screen uh, etc so head loss takes place so you don't do not get so good approximation so instead of that we normally prefer that uh, we will be having observation wells away from the actual well and in which we will be measuring the drawdowns because it is not always possible to measure the hydraulic head from the impervious layer from the bottom so certainly we measure from the top and we can calculate so so supposing that if we are considering say two observation bell then these figures will become in place of h o it will become h1 in place of h2 it will become h2 and likewise so finally this uh, steady radial flow to a well here i have written that statement that use of drawdown observations at well point is to be avoided exactly at the well it should be avoided due to well losses and hence thames equation for drawdown at any two observation wells can be written as now here you can see that h2 and h1 now h2 is away from the well h1 is nearer but the drawdown at the point h2 is s2 which is less than s1 so mind it the value must come positive so we have to put more drawdown so more drawdown will take place near the well so the observation well which is near to the well will have more drawdown so there we will putting s1 minus s2 is equal to h2 minus h1 is also equal to qw by 2 pi t log r2 by r1 so now for this uh, to solve this steady radial flow to a well we also have a graphical method of solution what we do in this graphical method is that we plot drawdown versus the radial distance r and this radial distance r is put on the uh, logarithmic side on a semi log paper so drawdown is on the plane scale and the radial distance from the well is on the semi log scale then we get a straight line now find the best fit for this straight line 
so we can draw a line then we can calculate uh, we can measure the slope how we can measure the, to find the slope of the line for one log cycle so one log cycle meaning that r2 by r1 is equal to 10 or log 10 because uh, the log papers are normally available for this log base 10 because it becomes easier for our calculation so that is how we use the log papers which is based on log base 10 then from here we can read the value of difference in drawdown now knowing the value of delta s that is the change, difference in drawdown we can substitute in the thames equation or equilibrium equations which becomes ultimately q is equal to 2 pi t upon 2.303 into delta s so delta s is known q is known if we know the discharge we can calculate the value of t that is the transmissivity now here you again note that natural log here i have replaced the natural log by uh, log base 10 so which is saying 2.303 into log 10 a so friends in this session uh, since our time is over i would be completing only up to this point and in the next discussion i will be taking up certain numericals on this and also we will be covering the unsteady state flow to confined unconfined and semi confined or leaky aquifers thank you